Welcome back. You're still watching The Big Story here on One News. As the Liberal Party gears up for the 2025 polls, three names were announced as potential candidates for the Senate. Tonight, we're speaking with one of them, a former Senator Kiko Panghilinan, who is with us live in the studio. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Gretchen, okay, like, uh, Sean, and mm. uh, Regina. How, like how we started with uh, Attorney Chel Jokno. Yeah. We had to confirm, to. no? <laughs> um, Senator Laila Dalima's statement that uh, you will be running for the 2025 midterm polls. So, are you well, or are you not? I was just with her this morning uh, and we had that clarified. We are seriously considering that as one option not to go back to the Senate. Uh, but we have not made our final decision yet. Uh, there's a process that we're undergoing together with you know, Chell, um, uh, BAM. So we're discussing this still. So it's, I'm seriously considering it. It's an option. And at the right time, we will make the proper announcement. So you're still waiting for, kumbaga, like uh, normal decision makers, waiting for a sign. Um, are there like certain parameters that must be met or you're waiting yep. for? Yeah, well, of course, obviously, you, you, you decide to run because you think you have a good chance of winning. So, uh, and polling is very mm -hmm. important as mm -hmm. a guide. So we're looking at the polls, we're weighing it, and, uh, and then we will see. So numbers. The numbers are a major consideration, and that's what we're reviewing now. How much work uh, does the Liberal Party need to do after the 2022 elections coming from that? I'm sure it was a full run for you. Um, yeah, you uh, which wasn't my plan, by the way, <laughs> originally. I, I had planned on, actually, the original plan uh, was to go for re-election in the Senate, but uh, Vice President Lenny then mm. decided last minute and I had to decide last 10 seconds. <laughs> I love that you brought up last minute because mm -hmm. my question to you is what is the timeline then? We're just over a little a year out from the midterms. Time is running short, I yeah. dare say. Yes. So what's your timeline for making a decision? What um, would be last minute before the midterms? Well, this is last minute uh, in the context of a presidential run. Mm -hmm. So that's... Uh, that was last minute. A harder you know, you, last minute. <laughs> yes, yes, because that's a one-on-one -on -one campaign, president, vice president. So this is a midterm. Uh, you have 12 candidates uh, vying for, mm. I mean, candidates vying for 12 mm -hmm. positions. So medyo, it's not going to be as last minute if, mm. uh, you know, uh, compared to a one-on-one -on -one fight. So we'll, we'll, maybe in the next uh, four or five months, that, that, that might be uh, a, a, you know, a working timetable. What um, what lessons did you take away from the last elections? Well, uh, digital technology, mm -hmm. you know, um, is, is important. Uh, if 15 years ago, I, I, my first national campaign was in 2021, so that's 23 years ago. <laughs> um, so if 20 years ago uh, you can't win without national TV, uh, today you can't win without uh, digital media, digital technology intervention. So. Um, so it's a, it's a major challenge. Disinformation, in mm -hmm. fact, it's a malaking uh, uh, baga yung disinformation. Kasi two pronged yung disinformation. Eh. They will disinform about their candidacies, I mean your adversaries, and then they will disinform about uh, their opponents, which would be in our case us. So, so, and which is what we learned in the last election. No? Uh, two pronged yung disinformation, um, and, and and therefore we, we, we need to address that. And that's what Attorney Chell was saying. He's uh, been busy making uh, legal <laughs> advice TikToks. Uh, yes. uh, we also had a conversation a couple of weeks ago with, uh, of course, another LP member, mm. uh, si, uh, former Congressman Teddy Bagilat, and he said, admittedly, no medyo na huli nga ang LP pagdating sa social media game. And we were even joking about uh, maybe making Manong Edsel Lagman, uh, tuturuan daw, paano gumamit ng social media. Have you been busy also <laughs> tweaking your social media content and maybe, you know, dabbling with the analytics or whatnot? Well, I've been, I've been busy with my advocacies even before TikTok came around. In other words, you know, we will do what we will do uh, on the basis of our, what we believe in. I, I've been farming since 2012. Correct. I've been chairman of this. I was chairman of the Senate Agriculture Committee mm -hmm. in 2010. So it's 2024 20, now. So I've been, I've been at it for the last 24. 
24, 25 years. I have seen, though, your uh, agriculture uh, social media content, actually. Yes. Of late, that's what, ha I mean, after 2022, that's what I've been seeing. Pagasi Senator Kiko, it's always around uh, agri and yes. farming. I just wanted to get your thoughts. Of course, agri is our main driver of, or of inflation right now. It's a big, big problem for every Rice, Filipino. rice in particular. Yes, is particularly the, that. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on our current situation? I just wanted to get a feel. How do you perceive the landscape? And are you happy with um, how our new agri secretary is handling everything? Well, uh, you know, I, I did post about the NFA's controversy. Mm. 100 plus NFA officials and employees were filed, were preventively suspended. You know, first, I work with these people. There are an, uh, definitely a lot of good people, hardworking, decent. Uh, honest people in, in the bureaucracy in the NFA but of course there are bad eggs mm. and uh, really in the end uh, unless good governance is still still basic um, during my time as uh, food security secretary we actually were able to bring down rice inflation within a period of one year from 15 percent rice inflation in June of 2014 to 0.8% rise inflation in June of 2015 with a lot, a number of interventions, including purchasing rice uh, at, at, uh, uh, at lower prices without tongpats, mm -hmm. you know, going after the hoarders, mm -hmm. uh, filing cases, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, uh, clamping down on smuggling, and, uh, and the rice inflation yeah, went down from 15% to 0.8%. And in the 20 years, in tw June 2015, inflation was lowest in 20 years. So you can do it, but it takes good governance to do that because there is a well-entrenched uh, bureaucracy and mm -mm. You, you know, the, the suspension of the 100-plus NFA officials was brought about by what? Because traders decided to buy mm -hmm. the rice. Who has the money to buy the rice? Not the NFA. It's the traders. So why aren't the traders being... Uh, who are these traders? Mm -hmm. Who are their, you know, I think media should look into their names, mm -hmm. who are behind it, how did they get away with it? Because that's the whole, you know, we, we actually filed cases during my time. I was going to say, you did, you instigated a few hearings during your time also. into smuggling as well. Also. Right, smuggling. So, so it's a combination, well, it's really good governance, combination of filing the necessary, implementing the law. You have the Consumer Price Act, you have the Price, uh, uh, the price Act, the Consumer uh, Protection Act, the Price Act, you have the uh, um, uh, economic you know, sabotage, smuggling, it's all there. Mm -hmm. So you just really need to enforce the law. And so uh, we actually support the efforts of uh, Secretary Kiko in going after, uh, uh, you know, entrancing the bureaucracy. Why yeah. is it so hard to stamp out the smugglers and the hoarders? As you pointed out, you, you guys tried. And, and we, this administration and, is trying too. Well, you know, it, we, we, admittedly, when they took over, uh, you know, what we started, uh, you know, was set aside. Mm -hmm. We had a very transparent process of bidding. Mm -hmm. uh, like, you know what I said? I, I, what I said in the post was, um, that's the indicative of the entire agri mm -hmm. Agri sector, right, yeah. you know mm -hmm. what happened in the NFA. Mm -hmm. It it applies to all other. Alin po exactly. Um, rice, mm -hmm. corn, mm -hmm. sugar, mm -hmm. uh, importation, smuggling. Mm -hmm. uh, you know the agri agri economy. Uh, agriculture contributes about nine percent into GDP, but that does not include uh, agri manufacturing, which mm -hmm. means fertilizers, mm -hmm. feeds. That's another fifteen percent. And it does not include warehousing, cold storage, transport, logistics. Mm, mm, That's another 10%. The entire agri, agro-industrial uh, logistics mm, industry is about 35% of GDP. Mm, That's a huge mm, al mm. amount of money going around. Mm -hmm. and, why, and why are the farmers poor? This is what I said. Unless the money going into that 35% actually is mobilized around building the capacity mm, of our mm, producers, mm. that's why food is so expensive. Yeah, it doesn't trickle it doesn't down. Trickle down, down right. Where's the money going? <laughs> <laughs> so there is... I love me, Senator. Uh, no, no, but, but ultimately, <laughs> it, is a, it is an exploitative, mm -hmm. oppressive, uh, economic mm -hmm. uh, relation, mm -hmm. uh, relationships that, uh, that are ongoing. Mm -hmm. 
and it is actually enabled by government. I don't know that we have the power to investigate. Of course, we have the power to ask questions. And we asked Senator Cynthia Villar questions as well, yes. now that she chairs the, this, the committee. Um, but we keep coming back around to the same questions mm -hmm. around why is there an inside job? Why are there traders who buy? Why is there price inflation? You know, you know, so in the same 40, names also. It's the also 42, the same names. I, I, will, I will go back to what we did. Because no? eh. uh -huh. in the 42-year history, for example, of uh, NFA during my watch, for the first time, uh, we had failed biddings. We rejected mm -hmm. the bids of Thailand and uh, Vietnam for being overpriced. Uh, four times we rejected, we opened the process, and four times they came back to us with a lower price. The total for that year of importations, we saved seven billion. Mm -hmm. So you ask me, well, why is it the same thing over? Yeah. You know, a lot of money is going around. Mm -hmm. So, sabi ko nga, uh, that's the step in the right direction. Go after the bureaucracy, but also go after mm -hmm. those behind the sale. Mm -hmm. the this, this, this is an illegal, the, the, you know, the allegation is it's an illegal sale of NFA rice to traders. Mm -hmm. So why aren't we talking about the traders? Mm -hmm. Can you get no, your thoughts, uh, Senator, on the We RTS. don't even know their names. Right. Mm -hmm. We know the names of all the NFA uh, employees yeah. and officials. They've been prevented, suspended. What happened to the traders? Every That's so where the often, money is. Every so often, though, Senator, the traders' names come out and they have been the same exact names. Uh, you know, there's a cartel for every single produce. No, which is what I said for... also in, in yeah. the post. Mm -hmm. There is no cartel per se. Mm -hmm. Because, well, I mean, sorry, when the government points to a cartel, mm -hmm. three fingers points back at it. <laughs> the cartel is yeah. a, you know, is a, a conspiracy mm -hmm. between government, mm -hmm. number of government, mm -hmm. corrupt mm -hmm. government mm -hmm. officials. Your mm -hmm. thoughts, Senator, and, on... And, and, the, and the business sector. Mm -hmm. The rice tarification law was supposed to uh, curb some of this um, uh, activity that we do not like. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? The uh, rice tarification it's... law uh, mandates you know, that we open up mm -hmm. the, our, our uh, rice industry into, so that it's more, uh, how do you call it, bring in, in importation, uh, allow for support for our farmers. Mm -hmm. Again, it's implementation because ultimately, once you open up our rice industry and bring in, you know, imports, you have to build capacity of your farmers to produce more. And ultimately, again, any intervention must be directed at building the capacity of our farmers mm -hmm. and our fisher folk. Mm -hmm. You know, Thailand is spending double what we're spending in agriculture, government. Uh, Vietnam is spending triple. So it's it has to be better spending, but also correct yeah. mm -hmm. for yeah. corrupt yeah. spending. Yeah. Yeah. No? So, so make sure that the resources are brought to uh, uh, supporting and building the capacity of our farmers to produce more. It's also, it's why are food prices so mm. high? Mm -hmm. Because farmers are not producing enough. Why aren't they producing enough? Because they're not being supported enough. Why aren't they being supported mm -hmm. enough? The inefficiency. Somebody in the inefficiency. Is benefiting. Well, Senator, benefiting. I feel like we can go what, what, on, and what, on, yeah. sorry, <laughs> sorry. on and on sorry. and on and on. Yes, just one, one more point. And around and around, yeah. Uh, when you strengthen and empower your farmers and fisher folk, then they cannot be exploited. Mm -hmm. they, you, you cannot buy dirt cheap palai prices from them. You cannot buy dirt cheap onion prices from them because you've empowered them. So there is really this antiquated, oppressive mm. system mm. that is mm. enabled by government mm. and this, sabi ko nga, the unconscionable partnership of greed mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. that Senator, has to be addressed. So it's, it's good governance. Ultimately, mm. put somebody there who, who will not kowtow mm. uh, to the system and who will fight it with the support, of course, of the president. Uh, that's how you... That's how you turn around the agri uh, economy. Well, it seems that uh, uh, the past years, you know, um, has uh, gotten you to observe all of that. Mm -hmm. You've taken a back seat the past years. I mean, from being very active in government, of course. Uh, but I'd like to get your thoughts on what's been happening, all the political movements now. Um, first, <laughs> I think, would be... You know, it's easier to talk to my... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> my lettuce and my herbs yeah. and my no, do you think, chickens I, and my pigs. Do you right? think there is a sense of justice um, it, under this Marcos administration with uh, the granting of the release uh, on bail of Senator Laila de Lima? Um, you filed 
a cyber libel complaint, of course, still with the I filed two, actually. And I filed a case against YouTube mm -hmm. and Google. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll, and, we'll see. And also, the criticism on President Marcus's, Marcus not doing enough um, to make up for former President Duterte's war on drugs. Uh, what is your sense on the current administration's um, enforcement of justice? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's a broad, very general state uh, question. Also, but but uh, let, let's, for example, I'm appreciative of uh, this current administration's position on China. Mm -hmm. Definitely much better than the previous administration. Uh, and we support the, the effort to stand up against China and, and, and uh, to, uh, you know, uh, and be mindful that, you know, uh, we will not give up an inch. You know? mm -hmm. But it has to move forward also. How do we now strengthen our allies, our alliances with ASEAN? How do we strengthen our uh, uh, bilaterals with the U.S., with Australia, with Japan, all those who, who, who believe that we should have a better, you know, uh, that the, who disagree with the aggression that is happening in, in, in the West Philippine Sea. So, so I agree in that regard that that is a... Uh, so, uh, tama lang yung pag-iikot ng presidente sa buong mundo? <laughs> well, you know, uh, kailangan din yung magpirmi rito at hanapan ng solusyon yung mga problema rito. <laughs> but, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to go hopping everywhere uh, to be able to achieve that purpose of, uh, you know, uh, pushing for your our rights mm -hmm. and, and our uh, ex to our exclusive ec economic zone and our ter territorial sea. And yet, um, in the, the upper and lower house um, and with the administration now, we're seeing a new opposition coming forth, the Dutertes and the Marcuses. Uh, where does the Liberal Party find themselves in all of this? Are you still in your You know, it's opinion? so easy to Are say you your opposition. The... You know, that's why I we, we've to... seen that already. And dali dali magsabing opposition. And dali dali magsabing la magkaaw ano ayon natin ng corruption. And dali dali sabihin eh, na kung ano ano di ba that we are for the people. Eh, ang ang panawagan ko na lang bis na i-comment ko na lang siya nasabi nila do sa taong bayan. Maging mabusisi tayo. Wag tayo basta basta magpapaniwala. Pag sinabi natin opposition, eto to ubang talagang opposition dahil sa uh, dahil sa paninindigan o ito yung opposition dahil uh, may sariling interest na pinoprotektahan, di ba? Uh, dati ay gusto ng chacha. Ngayon, ayaw ng chacha. Di ba? Sa, sa, ba ano ba talaga? But actually, no? that's what the analysts have been saying, right? With a divided unit team, there is an opening mm -hmm. for the Liberal Party now to come in. Mm -hmm. You could break up the numbers. You could gain more well, of Well, you know, a, a third poll is possible, but mm -hmm. that uh, whether or not may appetite for that uh, remains to be seen. But you know, in 2007, actually, I ran as an independent mm -hmm. in the midterm elections. Okay. I did not join Arab's mm -hmm. administration. I did not join GMA, I mean, Arab's opposition and GMA's administration because they decided, diba? okay, uh, uh, opposition will be headed by Arab administration by GMA. And I asked them both to resign. So I said, I cannot suddenly out of the blue after asking both of them to resign i will align and say sige joke only no i have to win so i ran an independent campaign i did not join any of the big tickets that was in a way um, a third option to the two mm. but it was viable then in my sense because uh, uh, the administration was not very popular under yeah. gma and of course there was people power too mm. uh, Edzo was mm -mm. Edza dos, and, and therefore the, the president. So is it president possible Sasha. again, Senator, next year that you could uh, take that same road and run as an independent? Is that in uh, in the possibility of choices? Well, uh, sabi nga nila, uh, politics is uh, the realm of the possible, diba? <laughs> and uh, depends if they're going to go down that road and they're going to attack one another, then there might be an option for a, a, a alternative to both. But we will see. Si former VP Lenny, nakausap niyo po ba? Nakakausap naman. Kinoconvince ninyo na tumakbo? <laughs> well, we, we, you know, her, her concern is uh, politics in, in the local uh, mm -hmm. because of the legacy of Sen, uh, Sec Chesi. So I, I can understand that and I respect that. Um, but I went back to her and said, after all, ma'am, uh, when we were convincing you to run for president, uh, you said, if it's meant to be, it will happen. So I would mm -hmm. just... Mm -hmm. I would just leave, leave it, it at that. that.
The one okay, thing that's uh, meant to be is your show. Yeah. Before we run out of time, you have yes. a new show. Tell us about it. Yes, uh, it's uh, Hello Pagayan. It's about farming, about food. Uh, uh, we will be doing it here in uh, 1PH in uh, Signal. And uh, we actually started already. Mm -mm. Our first episode was last week. What's different about it? Um, well, it's, uh, it's about food. It's about farming. It's uh, the value of uh, food in our, you know, in our uh, daily lives. Do you visit other farms, or uh... it, it will be it will be a combination. Okay. We will visit other farms. We will uh, we will be in our farm. Mm -mm. Uh, it's hello pagkain. It's uh, so you also do food tasting. We can see you in Mario's in so Baguio. Mostly. Yes, yes, yes. Mostly we will visit uh, restaurants. Restaurants. So about eating Filipino food, lang ba? Farming. Uh, farming, farming, farm to table. Yes, following that yes. farm to table process. So we will have we will have too. different. We will have cooking. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. We will have uh, collaboration with chefs. Mm -hmm. We will have uh, tips on uh, agriculture, the plantitos and the plantitos. Pero yung pinag-usapan natin kanina na problema ng uh, agricultural industry, e pag-usapan yun rin puma. From time to time, yes, uh -huh. depending on uh, if you know if there are burning issues uh, affecting the agriculture sector, we will not. Uh, yeah, we will look into that too, and. Uh, you know, it, basta ang ano natin dito, farming, food, uh, and uh, food security. Uh, and, and in fact, uh, I was just there, we taped, uh, it's harvesting, we harvested about 315 kilos of, uh, of lettuce. Mm -hmm. So how do we make, how do we move away from subsistence farming to farm enterprise? Mm. Tomorrow I'll be in the farm because I have grade one students mm. from a, a, a school here in Manila doing a farm tour. Uh, um, yesterday, or the other day, I spoke with, uh, we have uh, OJT, on-the-job training students from uh, Tarlac uh, Agricultural University. So we're, you know, we're doing all the, what, what needs to be done to make, uh, in our advocacy for farming and food security. Mm. And mm. Uh, yeah, so that's right. When can we watch this? Uh, this is Saturdays, 11 o'clock, uh, here on uh, 1PH, and then we also have uh, Replays on uh, on uh, YouTube, mm. Uh, mm, 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 mm. and then we're also in. Uh, I think teasers will be in uh, uh, Facebook. Facebook, no? for and sure, then my yeah. own uh, my own YouTube channel and my own uh, Instagram account, Facebook account. Okay. It will it will also be uploaded. Is this there. one season or tuloy tuloy lang? Uh, one season. And then we'll see. We'll take okay. it from there. So, uh, hello, pag everyone. Also, hello, pagkain. Yeah. Hello, pagkain. 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 They'll yeah, teach you yeah. to be domesticated. <laughs> yeah. how, how to plant lettuce and make it grow. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, former Senator thank Kiko you. Pangilinan. Catch him again on uh, Hello Pagkain Saturdays on 1PH at 11 a.m. But that's it for the big story on One News. Tonight. We are One News, all sides, all the time. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good night.